Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be looking at Amazon's New World MMO and look at everything we need to know about the game. Uh, to start it off, we're going to try to look at the background of Amazon's New World. Um, it takes place in Eternum, a supernatural island which is home to dark power. As the latest wave of explorers, players face not only the island's dangerous corrupted wildlife, but also the undead remains of previous expeditions that have been lying in wait for centuries. This ultimate Amazon um, New World guide will really kind of just get you guys pumped up about what's coming. Uh, I'm just kind of going to go over what we do know about the game so far. Uh, obviously, there's a ton more that we don't know about the game. But at this point, this is everything we know. And I'll kind of read through um, a list of things that we actually do know. Uh, and some of you guys probably won't know about all of these things. So we'll go through this um, entire list of things and let me know in the comments below if I missed anything so I can, uh, you know, put that and make it notable um, in future videos. So there's another reason so many are drawn to Eternum um, because Azoth, the same substance that can corrupt those who come in contact with it, is also a rare, powerful mineral, or not mineral, but material. Uh, it places a vital role in the game as it can empower players, foes, and items. The game was originally framed in the mid-1600s uh, in, in the colonization period, but has since shifted towards a more fantasy-focused setting. As a sandbox or open-world MMO, it aims to set itself apart from previous online games by offering a vast world to explore and a lot of freedom when it comes to playstyles. Um, now we're going to look at the gameplay. While the term survival has often come up with when describing New World, the few survival elements that the game has, um, when press and media you know, got their hands on it, it was supposedly uh, since been removed. At that time, players started with nothing but a few scraps of clothing and had to gather sticks and stones to build their first tools and crude weapons. They also had to scavenge for water and hunt wildlife for food, which can be prepared at campsites that players could freely place in the world and acted as a first basic crafting station. It is unknown how much of these elements are still in New World at this point. However, they were in the Alpha. As players explore the map, they'll fight not only wildlife, but also a variety of undead and supernatural enemies. Their main foe, however, is a faction called the Corrupted. Uh, they are cultists empowered by the ancient corruption of the island. That have erected fortifications and seek to erase all life on the island, or enslave it to the corruption. Combat is inspired by Dark Souls, meaning there is no tab targeting like in most other MMO games. Instead, action combat lets you freely engage enemies with aimed attacks, with blocking, dodging, general positioning, and timing being main elements of PvE and PvP engagements. Ranged weapons also have to be aimed manually, and most likely the same will be true for magic attacks, which have not yet been revealed. There is player collision. Gathering and crafting play a vital role in the game next to exploration and combat and are explained in more detail in their own sections below. Another major focus is territory control and mass sieges, either against other players or hordes of corrupted. There are no traditional classes in the game. While you gain experience and level up just like many players are used to from other titles, attribute and skill points can be freely distributed in whatever you want to focus on. It is uncertain if we will have traditional roles such as a tank, healer, and DPS in the game, but the armor and items we have seen so far hint strongly at that being the case, through character and equipment customization rather than predetermined classes and skills. For example, you could focus on heavy armor and shield and take the role of frontline fighter, or you can use leather and bow and stay behind your better armored companions while you engage enemies from range. Magical healing gauntlets let you take on more of a supportive role, and we imagine all these roles can be mixed and matched using the free skill system. A plate armor wielding battle mage might be possible in New World. The system allows you to specialize as you see fit using weapon masteries or even completely ignore combat skills and become a master craftsman or trader. It's possible to respec, at least early on, allowing players to experiment the different combinations before choosing their path. The skill system is also said to allow for endless progression. PvP PvP is a major part of New World. 
Although it has seen drastic changes in the last six months, while there is possibility to engage in PvP with other players and even fight massive battles over territory control, it is also possible to completely opt out of PvP. PvP is still a focus of the game, but only fair, consensual, organized, and skill-based fights, not the type of griefing and player killing that we saw in the alpha. New World has an opt-in PvP system. You can now switch between PvP enabled to disabled in your player house or a settlement. Then venture out in the world either completely safe from others or able to freely engage those who have also enabled PvP. To be able to opt into PvP, you must be at least level 10 and have joined a faction. The criminal system that was in place in earlier versions has been removed. Players do not drop items on death, another change from previous versions. There won't be PvP servers, at least not on release, and PvP is supposed to be extremely rewarding. Although details have not yet been fully revealed, opting into PvP grants bonuses such as increased experience gain in order to provide an incentive for the increased risk. On the other hand, the risk is pretty low compared to other games because of the lack of item drop on death. PvP is very skill based due to its action oriented nature and player stats and attributes don't play as much of a role as they do in other games. In fact, even a 10 level difference in player levels is supposed to be surmountable, meaning a lower level player should be able to be a higher level player purely depending on skill. Not much is known about the PvE content in New World yet. Earlier in 2019, the closed alpha was shut down in order to focus more on PvE and introducing vast changes. And AGS has yet to reveal exactly what they came up with. Apparently, they've added quests to the game in order to provide players with a more structured gameplay experience. Another feature that we already know about is invasions, where hordes of corrupted or undead will assault player settlements. Corrupted breaches are world events that can appear anywhere on the map provide additional PvE content, although no details have been released yet. There won't be any dungeons or raids in the game at release, although they may be added at a later date. New World will have world bosses. Settlements Settlements are one of the major selling points of this game. Players can create organizations and forms of companies, guilds or clans in other games, and take over several of the claims that are scattered around the world if they are strong enough. These claims can be developed into full-blown cities with crafting stations, fortifications, and a tax system. Settlements will also allow for player housing, even granting access to players outside the owning company to build their houses and farms there in exchange for taxes and support in war. It is not known currently if these settlements can be built freely or come pre-built. Settlements can be attacked by other companies during war or NPC invasions. Items and storage of player housing are safe even if the settlement is conquered by an opposing company. Sieges Sieges are a way for a companies to remove their enemies' claims from the world map, take over their settlement. They are pitched as a massive 50 vs 50 battle between companies. To prevent third parties from interfering with the war, the settlement will be shielded from outside influence making it impossible to participate if you are not invited to one of those two parties. During the war, attackers and offenders gain points through unknown means yet uh, that can be used to upgrade defenses or get access to siege equipment or gear. The siege ends either if the attackers manage to breach the walls and claim the flag in the center of the claim or if the time runs out. Players can sign up to participate in sieges even if they don't belong to a company. Player settlements can only be sieged during a one hour window that the company can define, making sure that players don't have to be alert 24-7 in order to protect their claim. Players could previously use siege hammers or powder kegs to overcome the settlement's defenses. More siege weapons have been added since then and can be unlocked and constructed during a siege. Factions There are three factions in this game that players can join, offering structured PvP outside of company vs company warfare. Not much is known about these factions or how the faction PvP system works. Companies are player created organizations that offer a hierarchical structure. Companies are limited to 50 players and it is not currently known if they can form alliances with other companies. They can however declare war on each other and during which players can freely attack opposing companies and eventually launch a siege on their territory. Twitch integration. Twitch integration is planned which would allow streamers to interact with their viewers in game, invite them to streamer armies. Streamers can also flag themselves in game so others know who they are interacting with and can look them up on Twitch. Not much more is known. World map. 
The map of Eterm is large and can hold over a thousand players at the same time. Areas have different types of resources and biomes. Crafting. Crafting is a major focus of New World, and currently the following crafting professions have been seen. Blacksmithing, engineering, outfitting, alchemy, cooking, wilderness survival. Other life skills that are hinted at, logging and carpentry, mining, masonry and smelting, harvesting and weaving, tracking, skinning and tanning, fishing, farming, bounty hunting, treasure hunting, and building. Keep in mind that some of these were only placeholders in the interface last time they were shown in a video and may have been removed or changed since then. Crafted items can have different tiers in quality, standard, fine, superior, artisan, flawless. That influence an in item's gear score. Resources used in crafting can have different rarity. White, green, blue, purple, higher tier items of the same type require additional crafting components. Items can be salvaged to get some of their base materials back. There is also a repair skill. Housing. Players can buy or possibly construct houses to decorate them. They can also acquire trophies and mount them on the walls of their houses, offering bonuses that may help them in combat against certain creatures. One of the pre-order bonuses is a pet for your player house. Mounts. Nothing is known about mounts at this time. Weapons, armor, and other equipment. Falling weapons and offhand items have been spotted so far. One hand and two hand swords, two hand axes, two hand hammers, spears, maces, two handed staffs, bows, muskets, pistols, torches, shields. Armor comes in many different sets of cloth, leather, and heavy armor. Trapper set, duelist set, explorer set, witch hunter set, plague doctor set, sage set, officer set, soldier set, heavy set, inquisitor set. There are also rings and amulets that provide bonuses to resistances and other attributes as well as potions and poison coatings. Items have a tier gear score and a wide range of different defense and absorption bonuses against physical and magical attacks. Inventory and banking. The inventory is limited by weight and so is the equipped gear. Banking is available in player settlements in the form of storage buildings. Equipped weapons have to be dragged to the hotbar in order to be used and only three weapons or tools can be equipped at the same time. Magic. Magic will be in the game, and magical gauntlets and stab weapons have been shown as concept art or in screenshots. Offensive magic has been revealed through a short video clip showing off a firestorm meteor shower spell, which seems to be a channeled AoE. Social features. New World will have in-game voice chat. There are also emotes and in-game titles. Release. New World is set for release on May 26, 2020, and the game will be available on Steam. You can also buy it directly through Amazon, but even if you get it through Amazon, you will get a Steam key and launch the game through Steam. There will be optional in-game microtransactions. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you guys liked the information you got today, and I'll see you guys next time on the next New World video.